Yeah, so Chomsky wrote this book, Occupy, and it came out, and he was saying that our country is not fascist. Well, I've been thinking about this. Is it fascist? Is it not fascist? Do we live in a police state? Is this a, a state that's governed for the 1% and the bankers and Wall Street and uh, rich people? Is there a two-tiered system, one for the rich, one for the rest of everybody else? Uh, the ones that have to, you know, the ones that can afford the lawyer versus the people that have to take the public pr pretender, right? Um, so, uh, you know, I've always thought of it as a fascist because it's hierarchical. It's everywhere. you got a boss, and um, the police generally stand on the side of uh, against the people instead of in solidarity with them. Um, but, like, take it from the different example instead of from the uh, authoritarian view. Take it, take it from the democratic view, right? So America, America is the greatest democracy in the world. We're the greatest, right? America is the greatest democracy in the world. And since we're the greatest democracy in the world, we should be uh, setting the example. We should be showing everybody exactly how it is that we perform our democratic functions here in this country. So I'm wondering... Where is our democracy? Where's our democracy? Where is the democracy? Where's the democracy at? I don't see it anywhere. I don't see it in the households. I don't see it at work. I don't see it in the classrooms. I don't see democracy anywhere. There's no place, like, I don't even see it in the political structure and, you know, amongst our political structure, 12%. 12% of uh, uh, Kentuckians vote. So the majority of Kentuckians are actually against democracy and participating in their government. They don't, they don't even want to fucking bother with that shit. They... Government, making choices for ourselves, choosing our leaders, ah, fuck that, who gives a shit? We don't give a fuck about politics, we don't care about civics or ourselves or our neighbors or our kids, we don't give a shit about anybody, right, that's uh, Kentucky, so no, no surprise that we're number one in so many horrendous things, child abuse, animal abuse, child deaths and child abuses, high in child mortality rate, obesity, Car, uh, cardio uh, uh, deaths, so heart attacks and uh, you know obesity, cancer, uh, toothlessness, uh, mental health, and America's number one country for mental health, and Kentucky's number one in America for mental health. So we're like the the craziest of the craziest, <laughs> Kentucky, the old bluegrass. Um, but yeah, we don't. I mean, where where is the democracy at? Where where is where is democracy in this country? There is no democracy in America. I don't see any democracy. Like I said, twelve percent, twelve percent is not uh, it's not the majority. So eighty eight percent is the vast majority, and eighty eight percent of Kentuckians are they don't give a fuck about what the hell is going to happen tomorrow with their government and uh, their leadership and what's going to you know who's going to be spending the money if it's going to go where it's supposed to go or if it's just being all stolen from everybody. And you know part of it's the low education and uh, the, the education system is fucked. So that's on top of it. But, you know, go back to the democracy thing. Go back to the democracy thing. Like, there's no democracy anywhere. Not, not in our hospital structures. No structures. No organization has a democracy. It's hierarchical. And I've heard it defended so many times. People say, well, it's efficient. You know, uh, hierarchy is so efficient. And it's also hard to get solidarity amongst everybody. And it is true. Divide and conquer and people are so, it's so easy. There's always going to be some fucking asshole deflector. Some Uncle Tom wannabe. Some dick sucker who just cannot wait to be lapping the fucking masses dick. Uh, so you, the oppressors must have the oppressed in order to maintain their their uh, oppressive stance. Um, but, you know, where's, where's our fucking democracy? Where the fuck is our democracy at? We, we're sitting there fighting wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and, and Yemen and Somalia and Central America and where the fuck ever else, 120 military bases. We're still in Germany. We're still in fucking Japan. Fuck America is the empire. We're taking over this entire fucking thing. And depending on which way America goes, if we are an empire, uh, or uh, then Bush will look, be looked as a hero. He made the right decision. He'd be like a Teddy Roosevelt, right? He carried a big stick and shit. So uh, at the turn of the century. So of course Bush knew that shit. But if we become uh, uh, a pleasant, kinder, gentler nation like Daddy Bush was wanting, uh, we'd start treating the world like equals. Then we would, um, you know, uh, I think uh, our position in the world would be better instead of treating everybody like bullies and trying to smash them militarily. Why not treat everybody like equals? I almost think, hell, they, uh, to some degree, they look for America for leadership and we start treating them like equals. I think they'd be so bold over about it. In 9-11, we had the world's sympathy. The world was, like, with us. They were like, damn, that's some bullshit. That's some bullshit that that had happened to you all, the whole world. And it was squandered for the Iraq War. 
Uh, so Bush is like, fuck what the world says. I'm going to do what the hell I want to do. Still goes back to democracy and freedom. We're fighting for democracy and freedom in Iraq and Afghanistan and Yemen and wherever else. We're fighting for democracy and freedom overseas. And we're spending shitloads of money, just trillions of dollars to fight for other people's democracies. Uh, but what about our democracy here at home? Y'all know anything about democracy? Y'all know any fucking thing about democracy? Anything at all? Like, have you ever seen democracy at work? You ever been part of a group where you all made a consensus decision and you said, on behalf of the group, we're going to make this decision and then we're going to go ahead and execute this plan? You ever been a part of uh, a process such as that or has it only been one boss, one teacher, one leader, one cop, one president, one governor, one, you know, dictator, a solitary, unitary leader who says, I have all the fucking power, you guys are all a bunch of dumb fucking slave peasants, nobodies, do as the fuck I say, and we'll, we'll be, uh, we'll get along that way, we'll be happy, so, um, yeah, yeah, there's no, there's no fucking democracy here. We're going to be fighting for democracy and freedom overseas. We need democracy and freedom here in the United States. We need democracy and freedom here in Kentucky and Louisville. 12% is ridiculous. That's our governor's race. 12% of the people turned out for the 2011 governor's race in Kentucky. 12, 12%. 12%. So, and the primaries was dismal. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Maybe it's the primaries I was thinking. I don't know. It's, it's fucking pathetic. The voter turnout rate is fucking pathetic here in Kentucky. It's no, you know, like I said, it's no surprise we have all the problems that we do have. We don't have any civic knowledge. So if the people are not voting, we're not even holding the politicians accountable the very least amount that we could be doing. Because if you're not fucking voting, you ain't doing any of the other shit you're supposed to be doing politically. Because if you're a citizen of the United States, you have the right to protest, the right to call representatives and cuss them out and bitch them out and be like, what the fuck do you vote you know, against S-Chip for? Fucking Jeff Davis, how dare you vote against S-Chip? You know, that's the, I voted for you and you, you didn't live up to my bargain and I'm pissed off. You're allowed to do that. These are things you're allowed to do. Now, you probably can't call them like a million times. Maybe you can. Maybe you can call their offices. They are our politicians. They are our servants. They do as we uh, want them to do. So I think... Um, I don't know, there's a Supreme Court case out of Warsaw, actually, where a woman had protested the judge executive's office, and the, the fight came down to whose space is that office? Whose space is that office? Is that office space the government's or the people's? And I, I want to say she won that. I want to say she won that. Um, but, I mean, what the fuck do you all even know about democracy? You know that, uh, that Kentucky's Constitution... Uh, is very progressive and uh, anti-corporation. It uh, debunks and invalidates Citizens United. It legitimates revolution. Uh, Section 4 of Kentucky's Constitution says that the revolution in Kentucky is uh, legal and acceptable and moral and justified if we're not getting peace, safety, protection of property and life. So... Uh, that's Kentucky's Constitution. Do you even know who your fucking representatives are? Do you even know who your city councilman is or your state representative? Do you know any of the people that's in the uh, positions of office right now? You know if you're 18 years old, you can't run for mayor, you can't run for any other position except for uh, uh, water uh, conservation supervisor uh, on the board of the water conservation supervisor board. That's all you can run for. That's it. That's all you can run for. It's just a small little spot on the board. You can't even become dog catcher. You can't be mayor, city councilman, state representative, uh, state senator, uh, federal uh, representative, federal senator, U.S. senators like Mitch McConnell, Rand Paul. I mean, you, do you know these people? These are people that represent Kentucky, and they're, um, it's actually fascinating to watch since Mitch McConnell represents the old Republican Guard, the old Socialist Republican Guard that was taking so many earmarks as how Mitch McConnell Center and uh, U of L got built because Mitch McConnell knows how to get those earmark monies. He knows how to bring the money back into Kentucky. In fact, Kentucky takes more than their fair share back into our state than what we give out. We're a poor state, so we're taking more money in. And you would think we'd be grateful for that, but instead we vote for Rand Paul, which is now the darling of the Tea Party movement. Um, and he has a shot at winning the presidency. I think he's got a better shot at Ron Paul. That teamwork that Ron Paul and Rand Paul are doing is working out beautifully. It's perfect. Ron Paul goes out there and says the truthful shit that's hard to say and he's going to take the bullshit for. And then Rand Paul comes up as a moderate, just talks to you like a dumb fucking politician, doesn't say shit about shit. Just bullshit you, just talks about the bureaucracy and talks about 
um, you know, just uh, balancing the budget and any boring thing that you moderate Americans would like get you to vote for them and then initiate this radical agenda, do away with the Department of Education, do away with the war on drugs, invalidate the Patriot Act, bring back our troops, all of them, all 120 military bases, come back home, start building roads and bridges um, here. And actually, the Rand Paul is, is, I would say, anarchist. He's an anarchist because he's against all government, so he's against the militarized, the over-militarization that I am against, um, but he's also against the social programs that I'm for, so he's against education and, and uh, you know, he's against all taxes, and I can understand his uh, argument. They said that government's a tool, so government by itself isn't bad, but a lot of times the corporations control the government, and then they impose their will on the people. And if that's how government's been working, then that's a fascist government. Again, fascism coming back up. It's a fascist government, FDR says, when the corporations and the government is... Uh, one, when they're unified, when they're together. So right now we have a fascist government, according to FDR. And Mussolini, Mussolini said the same thing. Corporatism is fascism. Mussolini was uh, Italy's dictator in World War II, so he was the Nazi for the Italians. So, you know, just where the, where the fuck is our democracy at? Where the fuck is our democracy? We, we don't have democracy here. There's no democracy here. There's, the only place in democracy is Occupy. So when people say, what is Occupy? Well, what is it? It's it's really whatever the fuck we want it to be. I um I am Occupy, okay? You can't take the revolution out of me. I am Occupy. And I think that anybody who's the 99% is Occupy, whether you admit it or not, even the police are Occupy, okay? So the 99%, the imagery represents the economic situation here in this country. 1% of America is making all the wealth, 43% of the wealth, and 99% isn't getting that much. 1% owns way more disproportionate share of the wealth in this country. And they want to say job creators, they ain't no job creators. In order to create jobs, you have a robust middle class. And how do you have a robust middle class? You make sure everybody's got jobs and that they're all working and they're paying taxes and that you have programs uh, like such as schools so you can educate the children and the health care so that way you can take care of people's lives, make the workers healthy and happy, um, keep Medicare and Medicaid and the Social Security, uh, a lot of programs that are on the books right now that's, you know, it's doing well, keep the EPA, keep, um, uh, you know, keep uh, the workers programs, um, um, I forget what their names are, but the, uh, uh, that defends unions, FDR enacted it. 35 with the Wagner Act, the National Labor Relations Board. So keep the National Labor Relations Board. So it's not that I'm against all government, it's just that we're in a war right now and then we're uh, at war with a lot of people. We've been at war since the beginning of this country, since 1492. And probably even before then, if you want to even go back to the history of the Native Americans, I'm sure they were warring too. So that's all uh, Kentucky and America has known about is war. In fact, if you look back at our history, I think there's like 20 years when we weren't at war. In 1492, there's genocide right off the bat. 100 million people. Just like that. Right in the very beginning, gone. Just gone. Vanished. That's it. 100 million people. A lot of people are apologizing for it. Say it was mostly disease or uh, they killed themselves out or um, you know other bullshit. Did they say about Kentucky they weren't in the Indians here? <laughs> It was just plain land, and nobody had this, you know, the lush forest and the rivers and the, uh, you know, the land, the fertile land. Nobody had it. The uh, Indians would come here every once in a while, like a vacation to hunt here, but that was it. They they actually didn't live here. So uh, we're, we're like the chimps. We should be like the bonobos, if you're familiar with our uh, cousins. The, the cousins of the human beings are the chimps and the bonobos. And the chimps are a warlike society, but the bonobos are a peaceful society, a matriarchal society where the women stick together. And they make sure that they're having their babies being raised the way they're supposed to be raised. And because the women are happier, they're actually more promiscuous, which makes the men happier, and then everybody's happy in this society. But the chimps are a warlike society, and they have an alpha male, the toughest male that can beat any of the other males. And you allow the toughest male to be the toughest male because he's the leader of the pack, and he helps fight the other warring chimpanzees who roams around in different areas. And when they're outnumbered, they run away. But if they're, they beat them in number or size, then they kill them, and they murder them. And the chimpanzees, ever since we broke out of Africa, went up to the caves in Europe because we had this albino disease. And when we were up there in the caves, and uh, uh, we still were warring in Europe, and then we took the war over to 
America, and we've been warring all the way till today. We haven't stopped war, and it's time to stop the war. It's time to get some democracy. Let's try some democracy. Let's try some Occupy. Let's see what the 99% can do. We see what the 1% can do. Let's see what happens when the workers take control.